people too ill by cancer. Who is Dr. Adolfo Panfili? He's the practitioner of orthomolecular medicine, a field closely associated with Linus Pauling, who advocated megadoses of vitamin C as a panacea against disease. He's also the author of several popular books on complementary alternative medicine, all of which are in Italian, and he was claimed in this video to be the physician to Pope John Paul II, though the personal physician of Pope John Paul II was Dr. Renato Buzanetti, so I'm not sure what that means. Yes, we have several people utilizing the principle by Dr. Lisa Clark, uh, the black walnut, the vitamin C, the antioxidation, and the alkalinity diet, the alkalizing diet, and uh, we have found very good results. And people, you know, when you increase the level of electron inside the cell, when you stabilize the cell with the uh, proper fatty acids, when you teach the people how to get better, just avoiding the old mistakes, cancer is no more mm, necessary. Note how Dr. Panfili barely spoke of Holder Clark's protocol, except to mention black walnut in passing. Now let's go back to his wife and find out why. Now keep in mind, this next segment is completely unedited. What have you seen so far with um, working with cancer patients and Dr. Clark's formulas? Great results, great recoveries, and I can say it because I'm not a medical doctor with my husband, <laughs> as my husband is, so I can be more sincere with you. And because, you know, medical doctors also in Italy, they have to stay aware of the, of, of the government. So is there a legal problem with saying that you actually cure cancer? Yes, of course there is. Yes, you cannot say you cure cancer. He was uh, called by the government once and they told him, you know, Dr. Panfili, you're, you're very famous, but you must watch out because you cannot say that uh, you cure cancer. So like Dr. Holder Clark in the United States, Dr. Panfili got told to limit the outrageous claims made regarding this protocol. And I don't think I will ever understand why they chose to include that segment. Perhaps you could elaborate on the word cure and help us to understand why you've chosen such a powerful word. The word cure is, is an accurate word. I chose it because it was the correct description of what I was pursuing. And yet the Federal Trade Commission disagrees. So now for those people that have cancer, we're in the second week of the healing process, heading for the third week. We've rounded the corner. You must be excited at this part in the healing process when you're getting to work with the patient. What do you see? At the end of the first week, we have cleaned up the tissues so thoroughly that we can afford to try to open the tumors. Wow, that's wrong on so many levels. Cancer does not require tissue cleansing. Now, the following clip from the MD Anderson Cancer Center may help explain the causes of cancer. To understand what causes cancer to occur, we must look deeper into the cell, at the genes that control the cell's growth and behavior, and how the cell's normal function may be disrupted or damaged. Since it is the genes that regulate the normal orderly behavior of cells, abnormalities or damage to cells' genetic components cause them to behave abnormally, to become cancers. In some cases, people have inherited genes that may predispose them to cancer, while in other cases, genes are damaged by external environmental factors, such as smoking, exposure to chemicals or ultraviolet radiation, and perhaps even viruses. If cells are cancer cells, they grow, divide, and eventually form malignant tumors. Malignant tumors, unlike benign tumors, invade and destroy surrounding tissues and nearby organs. You see what's in the tumor is still everything that you got out of the rest of your tissues. You may have gotten rid of all the parasites, all the bacteria, all the heavy metals, plasticizers, solvents, everything you have cleaned up in the first week, but it's all still there in the tumors. I'm not sure that Holda Clark understands what a tumor is. It's not akin to a cyst or a boil, nor is it full of toxins. It's the uncontrolled growth of cancerous cells caused by damaged DNA. Is it your suggestion then that you've already stopped the malignancy so the cancer can't now kill you? Oh, we do that in the first day. In the first day? Yes, we just give uh, a dose, a large dose, 
of green black walnut hull. And what does that do? That, that kills the stages, larval stages of the fasciolopsis parasite called the intestinal fluke. I think practitioners of medical quackery who take advantage of cancer patients are the very scum of the earth. They provide false hope to the hopeless and profit from the misery and illness of others. They are the parasite. And that's the only single thing that causes malignancy. That is the only thing that I have found so far over five years of studying possibly two to three thousand patients. All cancer. Yes. So we there may be other there may be other things, and other scientists can search for them, but I haven't found them. You may not have found them because you are not a medical doctor nor a particularly competent researcher. But ignorance is no excuse, as the myriad of causes for cancer can be found with even the most cursory of searches. Hold a Clark, you are either a liar or an imbecile. Why have no other researchers found this? They haven't looked. In 2007, the National Cancer Institute spent nearly $5 billion on cancer research and clinical trials. The idea that researchers are not looking for the causes of cancer is ludicrous. <laughs> All right, I've cut the remainder of this nonsense and chose to simply ask an expert on quacks. So, what kind of person is Hulda Clark? Well, there you have it.